Oh, hello. Well, I guess introductions are in order. Uh, thank you all for watching. I know what a lot of you are probably thinking. Oh, great. Another bushcraft channel. Well, there'll definitely be plenty of that on this channel, but we'll probably also step into a lot different things like preparedness, uh, self-reliance, a lot of old world stuff and mixed with the modern. We'll probably go out and have some adventures in the woods, test out gear. And that being said, we'll uh, go over what I usually carry on my person. So this first introduction video will also be my EDC. This is stuff I carry on my persons no matter where I go. And uh, my perspective on the issue of being prepared in general is going to be heavily EDC based. So with that being said, we'll uh, get you guys down to the tabletop and we'll go over my EDC. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there. All right, everybody. Uh, so my particular thing I, I like to focus the most on is going to be EDC, things that you carry on your person, hopefully at all times. And my, my philosophy on this is whenever whatever crisis strikes, you're going to have what you got on you at the time. You may not be able to go grab a bag, a bug out bag, get home bag, you may not even be able to get to your vehicle or any other preparations you may have previously made. So whatever you have on your person is liable to be what you're stuck with. So this is my general operating philosophy, though I do have a lot of other gears. I got bags. I got all the normal stuff associated with bushcraft and survival. But what I like to do here with West Virginia sur survival and systems and bushcraft is coming at everything with some old ideas, some new ideas, and quality of gear will obviously vary depending on budget, but for now, uh, I will go over what I typically carry on me on a daily basis. And for starters, just a simple, small Leatherman multi-tool. Can't go wrong with this. Uh, the uses are fantastic. I mean, taking something off hot fire, Got two different types of screwdrivers, primary blade, and uh, you know the obligatory bottle opener. But also, in this little guy, I've got a little extra stashed here in the clip slash bottle opener. Got two magnets. One has a hole in it in case I need to run a string through it, and another smaller one that does not have a hole in it. Now, if I can get this little fella out of here. These are neodymium magnets. They're pretty powerful for their size. And generally what this is for, I do do blacksmithing and knife, knife smithing. And this is for emergency in case I've gotten a sliver of metal in my eye, which has happened on more than one occasion. So if we can get that to focus. That little guy right there has saved my eye several times already. All right, let's get these guys back where they belong. I, I do own multiple multi-tools and, of course, Leatherman Wave, one of my favorites. But I find if the items are bulky, there's usually the tendency I don't want to carry it. If i got a lot of bulges or you know something's rubbing uncomfortably up against me, I'm most likely not going to have it on me daily. And those are in small bags and kits that I may take out if I intentionally go out into the woods and practice skills. All right, let's continue on. We'll stick with some cutting tools. I have multiple knives for obvious reasons. I like to have a sharp one on hand at all times. Ontario Rat 2 and D2 Steel. Usually keep that in my right pocket.
one of my favorites to carry swiss army uh my primary th reason that i stopped actually carrying like a case pocket knife folding pocket knife and went with this that little guy right there very handy to have for making shelters and fires and of course good stitch all most people are familiar with the tools can opener bottle opener uh two blades one very small blade and we have the primary larger blade and very sharp very sharp uh toothpick tweezer obviously and this one has a little hole to slide in a needle left pocket blade Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Uh, this one has a lot of sentimental value. This was a gift from my wife on the day that my daughter was born. As much as I, I fear damaging it, uh, I, I use it because that's why it was bought for me as a memento plus a very good knife that you can trust your life with, in my personal opinion. All right. Just simple birds, beeswax, lip balm, especially getting into this time of the year. Uh, it also is where I help you get a fire started. And I got a small little bit of change, I always keep in my pocket. Continuing on 100% cotton cloth this sort of doubles as my bandana i usually keep it tucked through my belt loop that's for emergency uh, tourniquet if nothing else if i got a bad cut or bleed that, that that'd be the first thing i can grab a hold of real quick and you know it, it's it's there for multi-functions char cloth all the usual straining water uh, all the cutting tools gotta have a way to sharpen it a little diamond hone that i also attach to belt loop this is a fine grit. We'll keep on digging. Got a lot of stuff. Lighting. Very cheap. Still pretty serviceable. Little flashlight. Also keep this on the belt loop. Got multiple items you'll see on the belt loop. Uh, it's about 40 lumens. It's not fantastic. Five hour run time. One AAA battery. I uh, keep a spare battery in one of my back pockets, but uh, gets the job done. I, uh, and this little guy, this is from Zippo. This is extra fuel for a Zippo lighter. Get into the back pocket here. I usually carry one or two of these, this pine. Uh, Usually I have two because one I'll whittle one if I'm um, bored. So if I have any downtime, sometimes I'll whittle one a stick or make a spoon. However, having these really helps with uh, getting a fire started. If conditions are quite wet or damp, I always have some piece of dry pine to help me get a fire going. Going way old school here. This is a shepherd sling made out of 550 paracord. Uh, there's several videos you can find on YouTube that can show you how to weave these. Uh, they don't have to be necessarily this small of a pouch. However, it's emergency cordage if I don't need to use a slingshot. But it's also a slingshot if I do need to try to gather small game out in the field. <laughs> and I will test uh, practicing with this tool. It's quite effective. It, it hits quite hard. A small 10 foot tape measure for measuring things, obviously. I do wear glasses, as you can see, so I carry about four or five simple lens wipes in my back pocket. You just got to be able to see. And rubber band. All right, let's get to the other back pocket. 
ear protection. These are very basic, simple earplugs that connect together on a cord. These are very handy. I, I had to use them at work multiple times or if you're around you're hunting or practicing your marksmanship, they're just nice to have them whenever you need them. And about in their 18 foot of spare cordage there, paracord. Not in there too, but chapstick. I know it looks like it. I took the uh, insides out, and that is a spare battery for my flashlight. Also, in that very back end of that pocket, these are some oddball things. I've had a lot of people question me why I carry them. Usually just uh, one nut and two washers. Just cause. All right. Let's see the multi tool. All right. And on my side, one of these little leather snap pouches is, of course, Zippo. A lot of people call them Zippo. I consider this a multi fuel ignition source. You can put multiple different fuel sources in this gasoline, rubbing alcohol, lamp oil, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So some of those are quite hard on the lighter, obviously. If you're using gasoline, it's going to be rough on the lighter. Uh, I like my Zippo. I, I know there's plenty of companies. I do have a couple of peanut lighters. They do work great, but I like the old school Zippo. Belt knife. This would be the Benchmade Puko. Pretty decent knife. It's not the best knife in the world, I'll, I'll admit that, but it gets the job done for me. It does keep an edge quite well, which I like, and uh, the sheath is terrible. Uh, I'll just say that up front, the sheath for this knife. That's why this is on there. That When I put the knife in the sheath, that hooks around the ferro rod that's on the ferro rod holder on the sheath. It swings under it, and so that will keep my knife from uh, flopping on the ground while I'm out moving about. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're moving to the shirt pockets now. Oh, uh, safety pin. A lot of uses for your clothes. Uh, improvised fishing hook. Well, I'll say this. It's difficult to use these. Uh, I have done it successfully, but it's rough. Right and rain pencil and pen. This is a fine whetstone. That's obviously for keeping the edges honed. We're, so this is a fine grit. It's fairly coarse, and I prefer to use this to work out if the, if the knife has more substantial damage to the edge. Hit it with this first, and we'll come back and put a finer edge on that. And finally, I'll strop it on my leather belt. And this is a simple torch lighter. Got to have more than one way to make fire, obviously. All right, now we get to the neck knife. Nothing fancy. CRKT. Bolts minimalist. I've had this for many, many years. I've used it quite a bit. Does not hold an edge well. I have means to keep my edges sharp while I'm out in the field. So I'm confident in carrying this. It's small, light, and that's a thing for me. I, I, I don't like big, clunky, bulky stuff. So this little guy, I definitely enjoy carrying. And we're definitely going to have something for signaling. We have a simple titanium whistle. Now, all of that is my basic everyday carry. I may switch 
different blades or a different name brand of an item, but it'll all be representative of what you've seen here. This is what I prefer to carry out about. Just to know that I have a lot of my bases covered in case something happens. Now in the world we live in today, I'll be realistic with you as far as the wilderness survival aspect goes. I live in West Virginia. I love my state. And it's got a lot of wild, beautiful nature for a lot of people to enjoy out here. But the truth of the fact is, uh, we can take you out in a helicopter out here in the deepest, darkest forest in West Virginia. Mountain country, hill country. We can drop you off, spin you around in a circle a couple of times and tell you to go. If you can manage to walk a straight line for about two or three hours straight, you will find civilization. That, that, is, that is the fact of most places in the world in America that we live in today. What prepping and survival, my personal opinion, we should focus on is what I like to call buying time. All these things I carry with me are a small purchase of time to help ensure my survivability in a very adverse situation. Now, as I said in, in the beginning, yeah, this is another bushcraft channel. There's thousands of them now. And there's quite a few that are infinitely better than what I'm doing now and probably will do in the future. But I got my own ways of doing things and there's obviously influence from a lot more popular, well-established bushcrafting community. Uh, however, I watch them all, even if a lot of them are the same, because may just see or learn something different, that, that one video. Maybe someone puts a twist on something, kind of make it their own, if you will, and that may inspire someone else to try something maybe they'll come up with a different way or you know similar way to do the same thing it works for them and it may help them out in the long run and in essence that's kind of what i want to do with this channel as i'm putting all this stuff back in my pocket i'd like to share what i know and maybe just maybe if it helps one person two people, three people, or get someone interested in going outdoors and enjoying their life, I'll be quite satisfied with that. Uh, there'll be much more to come. Uh, this is literally day one here. We've got a lot more stuff to set up for the channel. Maybe even have ambitions of starting school someday. Who knows? I guess that depends on how well things go from here. So, I like to tell everybody out there, take the time, take the responsibility to set aside small funds, get yourself prepped as well as you can. Some preps are better than none. If you can spare $20 a month, that's $20 a month. Get it while you still can. Buy time. So if you're ever in a situation where the world has ate itself, which it kind of seems to be trying to do currently, you won't be completely helpless. And with that, I'd like to say goodbye and good afternoon. I thank you all kindly for watching, as I'm sure you've heard and God knows how many YouTube videos. Subscribe, like, and share. Hit the bell icon. I thank you very much for your time. I look forward to making more videos with that. Y'all have a good afternoon.